Congratulations, my friends. Congratulations, you've now reached our lectionary podcast for this upcoming Sunday. Uh, congratulations, you are going to be preaching on a text that is perhaps almost too familiar. Congratulations, the upcoming gospel reading is Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. Congratulations, you've reached a text that is so familiar to be almost cliched, almost the stuff, stuff of a Kincaid painting, so cliché that it even appeared in the presidential inauguration. Congratulations. You're preaching on the Beatitudes, which for those of you keeping score at home, congratulations came up about a whopping four months, depending how you want to do the math, ago for All Saints Sunday. Congratulations. Congratulations, my friends in Christ, is the essence in many ways of these very familiar texts. Congratulations. The issue at stake is what is meant by the Greek word makarioid, translated either blessed or, for those of you who like Ren and Stimpy, happy. Blessed are, blessed be. There are so many issues at stake in these actually really familiar texts. But the most important issue is what kind of speech are they? Matthew in Matthew 5 is drawing upon a pretty standard genre, either going back to the Old Testament to use the tongue of angels as opposed to the tongue of men, the idea of the ashray that we see throughout the entire Old Testament, the blessed is, for example, Psalm 1, or drawing more from his milieu of the first century, the idea of makarioi, essentially congratulations. And that, my friends, is probably the best way to understand what's going on here. Ashrei or makarioi, depending on which language you want to use, is a pronouncing of a state of good existence. Ashrei is not a, in the Old Testament, is not a matter of Tell of an ironic benediction, but it's more from the wisdom school that says, well, what it means to live a good life. Keeping that in mind, when Jesus pronounces makarioi throughout these very familiar passages, Jesus is telling us what it means to live in a state of a good existence. Jesus is using performative speech, and for those of you pastors who are listening to this, you know all about performative speech. It's not something we do particularly often, but performative speech is speech that brings about a reality. So for example, when you have the privilege, or not so much privilege, of doing a wedding, the moment you pronounce them husband and wife, your speech brings about a reality. Much more so here in Matthew chapter 5. But what Jesus is congratulating is utterly shocking. The list is familiar to be sure, and the list is utter gospel, not law. And that's something to really keep in mind as you wrestle with a familiar text like this. What Jesus is doing is he's looking at those who don't belong, who have nothing, and pronouncing them in a state of good existence. And the list goes on. And it's utterly shocking. For Jesus' original hearers, Makario, you'd be expecting the rich, the powerful, the wildly successful. And if you, for those of you who remember the inauguration of a week or so ago, give or take, that's how these texts were actually used. Oh, if you're this way, God will bless you. But that's not exactly what's going on here. Instead, it's the exact opposite. Jesus looks at everybody who does not belong, who have nothing to support themselves, and pronounces them having a good existence. And that doesn't make any sense. And in fact, that's the beauty of Matthew 5. He picks on the poor in spirit, for example. And what does it mean to be poor in spirit? It means you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing, solely dependent upon God. This isn't the wildly successful person. This is a person who is solely dependent upon God to care for them. 
those who mourn is even more amazing. Mourning not exactly happy, happy, joy, joy of Ren and Stimpy fame. But what's amazing here is that God promises that they'll be comforted. And the idea of comfort here, comfort going to Nakam in, in the Old Testament, that Matthew picks up a similar idea, is a little bit different than what we do as pastors of the church. Oh yes, we comfort those who mourn, expressing sympathy at a loss. But when Jesus and God nakam, comfort, something completely different happens. Jesus changes the person's status. And that's the essential pattern we see throughout. And it gets better. The meek are told, to be in a, told that they are now in a state of blessed existence. A meek here, perhaps much more closer to being humiliated, a little bit more active, as opposed to just gentle, merry, meek, and mild stuff. To understand that verse, congratulations to those who are humiliated. And that, my friends, doesn't make any sense from an earthly standpoint. Congratulations to those who have nothing, to those who thirst for righteousness. And the list goes on and on. And then we finally reach that final verse. Congratulations for you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Congratulations. In Jesus' day, to be persecuted is not a good thing. And for us in our day and age, the persecuted are not the ones who are being rewarded instead of quite the contrary. Congratulations, Jesus says, that because you follow in my path of taking up your cross and suffering, you have a great reward, a reward of eternal life, a reward of Jesus who is with you, even to the end of the age. So congratulations, my friends in Christ. You get to preach on a familiar text, should you choose Matthew chapter 5 for this coming Sunday. Congratulations, Jesus says, to those who don't belong. Congratulations to those who have nothing. Congratulations, Jesus says, because they are baptized, because they are part of the kingdom, they truly are ashrei, makarioi, truly are blessed. So congratulations, my friends. May you be blessed this coming Sunday as you preach on this text.